It's been a long time since I reviewed an anime on the show, and this time I'm reviewing an anime that hasn't been in the print in the U.S. for very long. Yet it's one which has had a significant critical impact, and that anime is Angel's Egg, directed by Mamoru Oshii, or Oshii, and featuring art by Yoshitaka Amano for his character designs and also some writing content. Angel's Egg is a gorgeous, darkly beautiful work of film that is probably the most surreal work that Oshi has made, and is helped by the fact that, as mentioned before, Yoshitaka Amano did much of the art for the film and co-wrote the story. It's also the first film I've seen that I don't feel qualified to analyze. Maybe it's my autism preventing me from seeing some of the underlying metaphors or understanding some of the film's imagery. Maybe I need more knowledge of art and the vocabulary therein. Maybe I need to know more about philosophy, but nonetheless, it is a film that is depressing, tragic, sorrowful, and melancholic. It's a film that I definitely describe as an art film, in that you look at the film, and afterwards you don't talk about the plot, you don't talk about the characters, you talk more about the emotional context that the film provoked. The content of the film, not in terms of just the images, but in terms of the emotions and thoughts that are provoked in your mind as you look at these images. The same way that when you go in an art gallery, you don't just talk about, oh, that's a really attractive landscape. It's you talk about what's the intent, about the artistic elements of the landscape, how it uses color, and the thoughts and the emotions that are provoked in you from that, from that landscape, for example. I really, really want this film to get a release from the Criterion Collection, because I totally watch another 77 minutes, the full length of this film, of just film scholars and animators talking about this film and the themes and imagery therein, talking about the technical aspects of the film, about how various little animation things were done. Just talk about the film. Just, though, please stick to the film, though. I don't want to hear a whole bunch of general criping from people talking about how this is the only work of anime that's ever had artistic merit, because, frankly, I kind of hate it when film historians complain about how special effects are killing cinema as a medium. I'm looking at Geo Audio Commentary for the Wild Bunch. That said, this is an incredibly slow-paced film. It's dark, tonally, and in terms of lighting, and there's a whole bunch of scenes of nothing exactly happening in terms of action. Or even if there's action, there's not much narrative content. Not much plot progression, because there's not much plot. So, it's, it's if you're familiar with Oshi's work, this is kind of something to expect. But it does cause a situation where the film doesn't benefit as much from repeat viewings. There's enough slow bits here on repeat viewing, you are more likely to end up unintentionally glossing over the film rather than noticing new bits that you missed the first time. I completely understand why this film tanked at the Japanese box office. Indeed, this is the kind of film that really is never commercially viable. It's a film that is very much a work of art, and designed to be discussed, interpreted, and that sort of thing. It's like, Koya Niskatsi is a very influential film, and, and had a significant amount of success in terms of how it shaped film as a medium, in terms of use of time-lapse and that sort of thing, but it's also not a film that I would certainly not describe as a critical box blockbuster. That said, Koyanis Katsi as a film is one which, well, probably didn't cost as much to make as Angel's Egg does. You can do more or less in film than you can do in animation, because you have to create every image from completely from scratch, basically in animation. Yes, there's backgrounds and background layers and that sort of thing, and you'll need to paint those once. Maybe, depending on whether you're moving along and, and that sort of thing. But the cost of, of making something in animation is much higher. That said, in animation, you can, the sky is effectively the limit in terms of the image you, that you create, the world you can build, because you are not bound by the restrictions 
of what's real, of what's real, what's tangible. So, on the one hand, you can make something more ambitious than Koyanis Katsi, more ambitious than Alejandro Jodorowsky's The Holy Mountain. But on the other hand, it'll cost you more than it costs you to make those films. It would cost you more to make The Holy Mountain as an animated work than it would to make it as live action. An additional problem with this film is the fact that, well, this is a film that has very minimal dialogue, but consequently, every line is important. Considering this film has not received a legal US DVD release, VHS it's gotten, but a laser disc it's gotten, but not DVD, and not on its own. If you import the film and watch it without subtitles, there are bits of what narrative there is that you're going to miss, especially when you come to the film's conclusion. In spite of all that, should you watch this film? Yes. Once. Maybe a couple additional times if this film gets a Criterion Collection release with a whole bunch of material from film historians, or a discotheque media release with some audio commentary by anime historians like... Frederick Schott, or Carl Horn, or in particular Brian Ru, who has written, I won't say the book on Oshi, but a major book about Oshi, Stray Dogs of Anime. Or for that matter, if you're planning on getting into animation and want to soak up all the little details in this film and see and look at it and try to figure out how it was done, or all the subtle little touches that someone who knows a lot about animation would know, but maybe not the general layman like me. Otherwise, see it once. You don't have to see it more than once, but see it. Unless you have depression, then you probably shouldn't see it. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe and get you notified when future episodes come out. And liking lets me know that you enjoyed the episode. The video on the right will be of the previous episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives, if you want to go see what I reviewed previously that on that show. And the video on the left will take you to the previous episode of Breaking It All Down, while well, you'll get to see what I covered there. And below that will be a link to my Patreon page if you wish to back the show. Backing the show can get you a mention in the credits, and also, depending on your level of support, you can determine what I do future Let's Plays of on Breaking It All Down and what else I review on that show as well. So go ahead and click on that and back the show. Also, backing the show helps me get the show out more often and improve the production quality of the show, which is good for everybody. Once again, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.